All right, welcome back. Let's learn a little bit more about variables that have to do with numbers. Going to spit out a little more this time with a lot of little rules, um, but they're basically the rules that once you know them, you know them, and they are necessary in your code. Even though you're not going to spend a lot of time doing math, you don't want one simple little tiny line of math to totally break your program because you don't know these basic little rules. So here we go. One of the first rules we'll just show you here is integers have a limit. Uh, this integer variable sets aside a certain amount of space in memory. I'll just show you right here. I'm going to set my hours worked to 5 trillion or billion, whatever that is. And you're going to see the error. And it goes integer number too large. Okay, It can't store that much. There's actually a way to know how big the number is. Not a big deal right now. But if you know your program is going to be dealing with numbers, I'm going to see how big here. Okay, so that one's okay. One extra zero, not okay. You know, the number's big, but it's not totally big. But you're sort of stuck. So what do you do if you need to keep track of a really long number? Well, guess what? There's a version of integer that holds even longer numbers, and it's called long. So that's just another type. So, you know, I could still leave that as integer, because hourly pay is never going to get too big. Maybe your hours, maybe you work a lot, right? You're saving up for that car. Total pay, well, that's going to have to get a lot longer too. So when you need a really big integer kind of variable, just use type long. Okay, it's another type of variable you can use. Now, some people ask, why not just make everything long and don't even use int? Well, it does take up more space and memory. Not a huge concern with small programs. But it's frowned upon in the programming world when you use more space than you need to use, right? You try to be, I guess, environmentally conscious with your computer memory. Okay, so that's one rule there. Integers have a limit, okay? You can always use long. Another little rule we want to show you here is decimals. Let me reword this another way. Use doubles for decimals. So you'll see here I'm going to do this. I'm going to say my hourly pay is 10.25 an hour. And instantly I get the red line there. Possible loss of precision, required integer, found double. So basically it knows this is a decimal number, which is known as a double. And you're trying to set it to a variable that's an integer. It can't store it. And so what you have to do here is make this into a double. Now, you're probably wondering, people ask all the time, why don't they just call it decimal? Because they don't. Somebody came up to call it double, something to do with like it takes double the space in memory because now you got to store a number on this side of the dot and then you got to store a number on that side of the dot. I think it's called the mantissa. And so now you got two numbers, really, right? So they call it a double, double the space in memory. You'll notice here, you end up getting an error now. Because what's happened is, is you're doing hours worked, which is a nice integer slash long. And then you have hourly pay, which is a decimal. Well, the answer could come out to be a decimal number. So you can't have long there. You got to change that to double. Okay, Make it a decimal number as well, because your answer could be a decimal. And you'll see the program still works. And you get your answer there, right, with your decimal portion. Okay, so that's good. Now, we have even more rules here. Watch out for integer math. This is a big one with beginners. Here's a great example. I'm going to use uh, A and B. So I'm going to go integer 7. How about this? A student gets 7 on a test. The max on the test was 10. And now I'm going to calculate what percent they get. Now, a percentage is going to be a decimal number, so I'll make a double, and I'll say double percent equals their score divided by max. Now, you're good enough at math to know the answer to this one. 7 divided by 10 should give us 0.7. Well, let's print this out and see what happens here, and you're going to see our first example of watch out for the integer math. Percent is percent. Give it a run. And look at this. Poor student got 70%, but the program now says they got 0%. Here's what's happening here. When you actually have 
two integers. So that's an integer. That's an integer. And you do division or multiplication or addition, subtraction with them. The result is an integer. Now watch this carefully. You have 0 0.7. That's the real answer. Because you're trying, or sorry, because you're doing this with two integers, it does integer math. And the answer ends up being an integer. So even though this is the answer, only that is kept. There is no rounding up, no rounding down. It is purely the decimal part is ignored. Okay, It's not saved. And so the answer ends up being 0. Okay, So big key there, no rounding up, no rounding down. Just to give you another example here, let's say the student is somehow really good and they score 17 out of 10. We know the answer is 1.7, but because it does integer math, it only keeps the integer part. The 0.7 is not going to be there, and we should get a 1 printed out. Just a quick test, and sure enough, their percent is you know, 100, 1 1.0 okay, for their percent. And so that's one little warning there on integer math. Now let me put this back to 7 for the student. They get their 70%. Ah, let's up it. Let's, they're smart. They're going to get 90%. What happens if you actually want to say 0.9? What can you do? Well, here's what you can do. There's something called casting. Use casting when you need decimal math to take place. Casting, pretty easy. You can choose one of the numbers and make them a decimal number temporarily. So what I can do here is I can do this. This basically says, take that score variable, temporarily treat it like a decimal number, like a double. And so it's the bracket bracket and the type of variable you want in front. Since this is temporarily a decimal number, a decimal divided by an integer, it's going to do decimal math as long as one of them is a decimal. And so you'll see when I do this and I run it, now it gives us the 0.9. Now just as easily, I could have taken this and I could have cast the max variable into a decimal. Same effect. It will do the decimal math and you get the answer you expect. Pretty good, right? Another thing some students do is they may do this. I'm just going to override that line and I'll say 7 divided by 10. Well, that's an integer. That's an integer. Integer math gives 0, right? Percent is now set to basically 0. If you want decimal math to take place, you can turn one of them into a decimal number. Now one's a decimal. You get the decimal answer. Pretty good, right? So what do we learn here? You learned that integers have a maximum uh, top end limit and a bottom end limit if you're dealing with negative numbers. Uh, you learned that if you need decimals, to use doubles. You learned about the long when you need the big numbers. And you learned this important thing that you sometimes come across when doing your programs. If you do some simple math, watch out on the division. Okay, sometimes you have to cast if you wanted to do the decimal math to avoid losing your real answer. Next video, we're going to talk a little bit more about some other number tricks, something called modulus. Thanks for watching.